Hello everyone. Today we'll continue our Algebra 2 lessons. We'll start with a new topic, which is rational functions. But before that, we'll discuss variation functions. Today, we'll talk about direct variation, which is, you are familiar with it, and another variation, which is the inverse variation. Now, as you know, a direct variation is a relationship between two variables, x and y. So any variation is actually a relationship between two variables. That can be written in the form y equal kx. Now, this is the most important thing, is the equation of the direct variation. It's y equal kx. It's a linear equation, but without y-intercept, or y-intercept is actually equal to 0, where k does not equal 0. In this relationship, k is the constant in variation, which is actually, if you remember, y equal mx plus c, m is the slope, so k is actually equivalent to the slope. For the equation y equal kx, y varies directly as x. A direct variation equation is a linear equation in the form y equal mx plus b. M is the slope, which equals k, and b is equal to 0. Where b is equal 0, what does that mean? It means that the y-intercept is at 0, which is the origin. So any direct variation relation, if we draw it, it must pass through the origin, the 0, 0. And the concept of variation k is the slope. Because b is 0, the graph of the direct variation always passes through the origin. So in order to know that it is a direct variation or not, we can graph it and see if the line is passing through 0, 0, it's a direct variation. Otherwise, it's not. Now here, we have reading math. The phrase, the phrase is y varies directly as x, and y is directly proportional to x, have the same meaning. So when the question say y varies directly as x or y y directly proportional to x, it's the same idea, y equal kx. So this is the graph of the direct variation. It must pass through the 0, 0. Now, let's look at the, this example and try to find missing information. Y varies directly as, as x. Now, once we see this, this sentence, Y varies directly as x. It means the equation is Y equal kx. Since this is our equation, the general equation of, of direct variation. Now, what should we do? We should actually look at what is given. And y is equal to 27 when x is equal to 6. So they are related. So we have x6 and y27. Write and graph the direct variation function. So the direct, this is the direct variation function, but we need to find the constant of variation, which is k. Now, how can we find it? We have x and we have y. We have x and y, we just substitute y instead of y, 27 equals k times 6. So divide by 6, so we can say that k equals 27 over 6, which is divide by 3, 9 over 2. So our equation is y equal 9 over 2 x. This is the equation of variation of the direct variation. Now, if you want to graph it, it's a linear function. We can graph it in different ways, either using slope intercept, or we can use a table, a small table, with x and y. If we put 0, it's 0. If we put 2, it's 9. I choose 2 here in order to get rid of 2. It's 9. It's enough, 0 and 0. 2, 1, 2, and 9. Let's say this is 9, so it will be here. This is our direct variation function. 
let me draw it more accurate it is it will be something like this so the most important thing is this, is this equation and the given which is uh, x and y and to, to, to find the direct variation equation, we must find the constant of variation, which is x. When you want to find a specific value in direct variation problem, you can solve for k and then use substitution, or you can use the proportion derived below. Now, if we look here, the, like the previous question, if y equal 27 when x equal 6. This is y1, this is x1, they are related. Here y1 equals k x1. So what is k? We can find k, it is y1 over x1. Now if I have another value of x and y, the same variation, that is variation, y2 equal k x2, so it means y, k equals y2 over x2. Both k's, this one and this one, are the same, so we can substitute instead of k and get this proportion, which is y1 over x1 equals y2 over x2. This is direct variation proportion, which we can use to direct find a missing x or y. Let's have an example. If you look here, the parameter of regular decagon varies directly. So. We have to stop here. What do we have? We have the parameter varies directly with the side. So what does that mean? This is x, this is y. So if I, if I wrote it, this is as x and this is y, so it means that y equal kx. So what does that mean? That the parameter varies with the side. So we can write it like this, the parameter P equal K times the side. This is the parameter varies directly with the side. Now and P, we have P and S, P equal, which is Y, 18, when S is one and a half. So this is S, this is P, we just substitute 18 equal k times one and a half, divide by one and a half, divide by one and a half, so k equals 12. So what does that mean? It means that the parameter of the decagon is equal 12 times the side. Now the question asks us, find the parameter, find the number of sides when the parameter is 75. So when the parameter is 75, we want to find what is the length of the side. We just substitute in this formula, P, how much is P? Is 75 equals 12 S divided by 12. So S will equal divided by 75 over 12 centimeter. Now, if we want to use the other, the other proportion, this is P1 over S1 equal P2 over two, uh, S2. Y1 over X1 equals Y2 over x2, so p1 is the y and s1 is the x. Now we have, this is p1 s1, so I can put it direct here without finding k, 18 divided by s1 1.5 equals p2 75 divided by s2. We, put, we make cross the product, so it will be 18 s2 equal 75 times 1.5 over 18. Now this will be when you s divide them it will be 12 so divide by 18 so S2 will equal 75 divided by 12 which is the same answer as here. 
But the difference here, no need to find the constant of variation k. Here, you have to find the, the, the constant of variation and the equation of the variation, direct variation, then apply p to find s. Here, we can do it direct. So once you want to find a missing x or y, then choose the proportional is better. Now, let's move on to the second part of, the, of this lesson, which is inverse variation. Actually, it's the main part, because the direct variation, you are familiar with the direct variation. Here, it's new for you. Inverse variation describes a situation in which one quantity increases and the other decreases. What does that mean? It means if we have two quantities, if I increase the one of them, the other will decrease. If I decrease the first one, the, first, the second one will increase. They will maintain something equal. Let's see it. For example, the table shows the time needed to drive 600 miles decreases as speed increase, which is normal. If you want to drive 600 miles between two cities and you increase the speed, speed, the time will be less. If you decrease the speed, the time will increase. So it depends on the speed. So the speed and the time in this case are having inverse pro proportion or inverse variation. If we increase the speed, the time will be less. If we decrease the speed, the time will increase. So if we look here, if the speed is 30 miles per hour, we'll, we will have 20 hours in order to drive 600 miles. If we drive by 40 miles per hour, the time we increase the speed, it's 40, the, sp the time will increase into 15 hours. If we increase the speed into 50, the time will increase into 12 hours. If we increase, let's say, to 60, the time will be 10 hours. Now, each time you multiply speed and time, the answer will give you what? 600. Each time you multiply these, the answer will give you always 600. So, the time depends on the speed, and both, when you multiply both variables, you will always have 600. This is something that you will always have maintained the same distance. Regarding, regardless if you increase the speed, the time will be less. If you decrease the speed, the time will be more. But in both cases, when you multiply speed and time, you'll have the distance, which is 600. This type of variation is an inverse variation. So what is the inverse variation? An inverse variation is a relationship between two variables, x and y. OK, the direct variation is also a relationship between x and y. So what is the difference between them? Let's see. That can be written in the form y equal k over x. The direct variation is y equal kx. So the difference between them is that the direct is y equal kx. The inverse, y equal k over x. So we have here it's linear. It's a graph like this. It must pass through 0, 0. Here it's rational function. It's a graph is like this. So this part, the difference of the shape is totally different in the two variations. Where k does not equal 0, for the equation y equal k over x, y varies inversely as x. We can say y varies inversely, or we can say y inversely proportional with x. So let's move. and see how to use the inverse variation. Y varies inversely as x, so this means that y equal k over x. And y is 4 when x is 5. Write and graph 
the inverse proportion function. First of all, we want to use y and x here. Since this is my equation, y equal k over x, I have to substitute y is 4 equal k over 5. So cross multiplication, k equals 20. What does that mean? It means that the equation of variation, of inverse variation, y equal is 20 over x. This is our equation. Now, how can we graph it? Let's go to the next slide. As I said, the equation is y equal 20 over x. So what should we do? We just pick x's from left and right of 0 because we can't put 0y because at 0, it's the inverse variation is undefined because you have division by 0. So let's do it. 20 divided by negative 2, it's negative 10. 20 divided by negative 4, negative 5. 20 divided by negative 6, it will be negative 10 over 3. And 20 divided by negative 8, it's negative 10 over 4. Here, it will be 10, the same idea, 5, 10 over 3, and 10 over 4. Now, let's graph it. When it's negative 2, it's negative 10. There's another color here. This is negative 10. When it is negative 4, it's negative 5. This is negative 5. When negative 6, it's negative 10 over 3, which is 3.3. .3. When it is negative 8, it's negative 4, 10 over 4, which is 5 over 2, so is 2.5. So this part, the graph of this part will be like this. The same idea, will, I will graph the other part, this table in a different color, 2 and 10 here, 4 and 5, 6 and 3.3. .3 and 8 and 2.5. This is our function. So if you look at, look at this function, it's we call it in math as a reciprocal function, also a rational function, and also the, the, the inverse variation function. Now, let's move on. Let's do this example from the scratch. Why varies inversely? Direct, when you see this, sentence you have to write y equal k over x and we have y and x we just substitute them here so I'll say y equal k over x how much is y it's 4 equal k over 10 so k equals 40 so our equation is y equal k not k sorry it's 10 40 over x this is our equation now what should we do we just choose our Values, let's have 10, let's have 8, 4, and 1. Now the same idea, negative 10, negative 8, negative 4, and negative 1. Now let's find the answers. 40 divided by 10, it's 4. 40 divided by 8, it's 5. 40 divided by 4, it's 10, and 40 divided by, it's 40. And this is, I think, we can't graph it because it's a way. Now, here, but as you see, when x decrease, y increase. Look at the values. The same idea here, it will be negative 4, negative 5, negative 10, negative 40. So let's draw, draw it. Let's say this is... 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10. Now, 10 and 4, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So it is 10 and 4 here. We have, this is 4, 2, 6, 8, 10. We have 8 and 5, it's here. We have 4 and 10, it's here. And we have 1 and 40 somewhere there. So our function will be like this. 
the same idea with uh, this one. So it will be negative 4 and negative 10. This is negative 10. Ne it is, sorry, negative 10 and negative 4. Here we have negative 8 and negative 5. This is 8, this is 5. We have negative 4 and negative 10. And we have negative 1 and negative 40. It will be like this. This is our function y equal k over 40. And if you notice, if you multiply these, the answer is always what? It's always k. So when you multiply x and y, x times y, make cross multiplication here, the answer will give you always k. Now, we studied how can we find the equation, the, the constant of variation, then how to make a table, how to graph it. As we did before in the direct variation, you, when you want to find a specific value in the inverse variation problem, you can solve for k and then use substitution for, or you can use the equation de derived from that. It's either you find k and then find the value, or we, as we did before, we put y, k as the subject when it's x1, y1, and also k equals x, uh, y2, x2. Now this k is the same as this k, so we'll have the, this equation y2, x, y1, x1 equal y2, x2. In the direct variation, it was y1 over x1 equals y2 over x2. Here it's multiplication. We want to find the, the missing value. Now let's see this example and solve it in both ways. The time t that is taken of a group of volunteers to construct a house varies inversely with the number of volunteers. So what do we have? We have the time varies inversely with the number of volunteers. So t varies inversely with t. What does that mean? It means that with V, sorry, whereas invisibly with the number of volunteers. So it is V. So T equals K over V. Now, what do we have? If 20 volunteers, this is V, one, can build the house in 62.5 hours, so this is T1. How many workers, how many working hours would it take 15 volunteers to build the house? So here, we'll just substitute T, 62.5 equals K divided by 20. So K will equal Twenty times sixty, one thousand twenty. Twenty times two point five, one thousand twenty-five. So k a k equals one twenty-five. So what should we do here? We should write the equation t equals one hundred one thousand two hundred fifty over v. Now, the question asks us how many. Working hours, you want a T, if you have 15 volunteers, it will be T equals 1,025 1, divided by 15. And when we find the answer by your calculator, it will be 1,250 divided by 15. 83.3 hours. Now, let's do it in the other way, by using the formula, which is y1x1 equals y2x2. 
Why is T? T1 V1 equals T2 V2. What is T1? It's the time 62.5 times T1 20 equals the time is unknown. T2 times the number of routines is 15 divided by 15 divided by 15. So use the calculator here. 1250 divided by 15 equals T2, so T2 equals 83.3 hours. So as I said, this method using proportions or using this equation is easier than finding K and then substituting or faster, not easier, faster, because you are you direct find what the question asks you to find. Now you can use algebra to rewrite functions in terms of k. What does that mean? It means to find k direct from the direct variation or inverse variation e equation. So as we know, y equal kx, k is the variation constant. Now in order to find k, we divide both sides by x. So y equal k equal y over x is the constant ratio or the variation constant. On the other hand, the inverse variation, it's y equal k over x, we do cross product, so k equals xy or yx. So in the direct variation, it's a division. We now find k, we divide y over x. In the inverse variation, if we want to find k, we multiply x with y. So here, note that in the direct variation, the ratio of the two quantities is constant. In the inverse variation, the product of the two quantities is constant. So in the, this is the direct, we have a ratio. In the inverse, we have the product. Let's see this example, the cost per person C of charting a tour bus varies inversely. So first of all, you have to identify which variation. Varies inversely, it means inverse variation. So C varies inversely as the number of passengers n with n. So what does that mean? Since inverse variation, we know that y equal k over x, but here we have c and n, so it means that the cost will equal k over the number of passengers, which is n. If the cost, if it is, it costs $22.5 per person to chart a, pa a bus with for 20 per passenger. So this is C1 and this is N1. How much would, will it cost per person to charter a bus of for 36 passengers? This is N2 and the cost C2 is unknown. So we can do it either by finding K or I can use C1, N1 equals C2, N2. So it's a product. So how much is C1? It's 22.5 times the number is 20 equals C2 is unknown. The cost of the second bus is unknown. And here it is, the number is 36. Now we have one missing variable, which is C2. Here it is 500 or 450 equal 36 C2 divided by 36 divided by 36. So we use the calculator to find C2, which will equal $12.5. So if we have 20 passengers, the cost is $22.5. dollar. 
If you have 36 passengers, the cost is 15 point, 12.5 dollars. So if you notice, when the number increases, the cost decreases and vice versa. Now, this is the last part of our video, which is how to determine what type of variation do we have. As I said before, if you go back here, the constant of variation will tell us, is it inverse variation, direct variation, or neither. How do we know? If it's direct variation, we divide y over x, for all values, you'll have the same value, which is k constant. If it's inverse variation, we multiply both x and y, you'll have a constant. So what should we do here is we have to try. First of all, we look 6.5 and 8. If we divide 4 divided by 6.5, is it possible to be equal to 4 over 13.5 and half over 1.4, we have to use the calculator. First of all, we'll, we'll divide k equals y over x, which is the direct variation. So in this case, we'll have 8 divided by 6.5, and we have 13, div 4 divided by 13. Let's use the calculator. 8 divided by 6.5, it's 1.2, 3, 4 divided by 13, sure it's less, it is 0 0.3, so it's not a direct variation. What should we do? We try the inverse variation, which is k equals yx, so I'll multiply 8 times 6.5, which equal 52, 13, 4 times 13, also 52, and 0 0.5 times 104, also 52. So if you look here, both are equal, so this is an inverse variation. the second example let's do the direct variation we use division 30 divided by 5 I will write it here in green 30 divided by 5 because it's y over x it's 6 48 divided by 8 it's also 6 but you have to check all values don't do two only and leave one or leave more you have to check all values 72 divided by 12, it's 6. So if you can see, y k equals y over x is a constant. So it is direct variation. So this is direct, and this is inverse. So the idea is to find the constant of variation. If we, if it is direct variation, then we divide y over x like the second example, you'll have a constant, all of values, the constant of variation is six. If it is inverse variation, the product of x and y will also be constant as in the first example, it is 52. When we try to do like direct variation here, it was, not equal, so this is not direct variation. Thank you very much.